Okay. I'll bring this session to order for Orange Township Board of Zoning Appeals for August 18th, 2022. You want to call the roll? Mr. Trevs? Here. Ms. Neff? Here. Ms. Ross? Here. Mr. Shipley? Here. Mr. Oster? Here. Okay. Anyone who intends to testify, please raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony that you shall give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? State I do. I do. When it's your turn to offer testimony, please state your full name, address, and affirm that you've been sworn in. And I'd also like to remind everybody to mute their phones. It says recorded and streamed. Go ahead, Jeff. All right, the first case is uh, variance case VA CU 22 11. Uh, the applicant is Columbus Sign Company. Uh, agent is Chris Ross Rose. Uh, the owner is Unam Corporation. Uh, they had an agent with Zoning Resources, and Rebecca Green. The site is 6957 Green Meadows Drive. Uh, the parcel ID number is 318-230-140008-001. It's Zone Planned Industrial District. Uh, the request, uh, they are seeking an area variance from rezoning case 11-0055 Creekside Industrial Park and the Orange Township Zoning Resolution for a Divergence and Monument Sign Style. And they are also seeking a conditional use from the Orange Township Zoning Resolution for the Monument Sign. Now the subject property is located east of Green Meadows Drive. The site is currently owned by Unam Corporation and Zone Plain Industrial District. The surrounding areas uh, to the north is Plain Commercial and Office District. Uh, the future land use is uh, Next Gen Tennis Facility. Uh, to the south is Plain Industrial. It's a future ATS expansion. Uh, to the east is Single Family Plain Residential District. Uh, the railroad tracks. And then the estates of Glen Oak Subdivision. Uh, to the west is Plain Industrial District. It's Green Meadows Drive. And then Hoshizaki. Uh, in the staff report, you were provided with a zoomed out aerial of the site and then also a zoomed in aerial of the site. For the staff review, the variance request is for the sign style, uh, the monument sign requirements per rezoning case 11-0055 Creekside Industrial Park. Uh, uh, the standards are there as a poured concrete caps with two inch overhang. Four by eight sign area side per side, tan split face block, 16 inch thick sign, a minimum of five evergreen shrubs per side of sign. Shrubs may be juniper, boxwood, or holly species, and the sign screened by shrubs. And then there's an image of what was in the development text of 11 0055 for the monument sign. In the staff report exhibit one is the proposed sign that is showing the proposed sign style and dimensions. It will be five feet, six inches tall from the finished grade um, and eight feet across. The sign area will be four feet by eight feet. And then they also have an image that shows the setback requirement, which is 19 feet from the right of way. <clears throat> and that would be the the variance request would be allowing for the sign that was shown in the exhibit. And I can go over the conditional use if you want now. All right, for the conditional use staff review, uh, the sign is a monument style freestanding sign. Uh, the applicant is proposing a monument style freestanding sign as shown in exhibit two below. Uh, the maximum height of such sign does not exceed eight feet. Uh, rezoning case 11-0055 Creekside Industrial allows for the monument sign to be a max 
of six feet and six inches. According to Exhibit 2, the proposed sign will be five feet, six inches above grade. Now, the sign is proposed to be set back 19 feet from the street right away of Green Meadows Drive, which complies with the Creekside Industrial Park standards. Now, the sign is allowed to have a maximum of 32 square feet per side and there's 64 square feet total display area. Now, the sign does not have more than two sides or services. Now, this sign proposed will have two sides. <clears throat> the display area of one side or service does not exceed one half of the total display area. Uh, the sign totals approximately 32 square feet per side and 64 square feet total display area. Uh, the total display area and services does not exceed 32 square feet or maximum 16 square feet per side when located at 15 feet. Uh, there's a, uh, you can for each additional one foot setback from the street right away line, the additional eight square feet of total display area or four square feet per side will be permitted up to a maximum of 128 square feet total display area. Now the proposed sign will be approximately 64 square feet and be set back 19 feet from the street right away of Green Meadows Drive. Rezoning case 11-0055 Creekside Industrial Park requires the sign to be set back 19 feet with a display area of 32 square feet per side. Not more than five colors are used. Uh, for this purpose, black and white shall not be considered colors. The proposed sign will have two colors, so blue and gray. Uh, no part of the sign shall be closer to the street right away than 15 feet. As stated earlier, the proposed sign will be set back 19 feet from the street right away, which complies with the Creekside Industrial Park development text. <coughs> Exhibit 2 is just a, the same proposed sign showing the style and dimensions. And then also the setback again. Um, <clears throat> staff did not do any uh, site photos as it's currently under construction. Uh, so there's no way for us to measure the 19 feet from the right of way as it's, they're working on pouring the concrete for the entrances and the, the asphalt for the parking area. And, and it's all a mess right now. So, but it is currently under construction. So, do I understand that the only thing they're really requesting is to change the monument sign away from what was planned in that industrial di district? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the request is just changing the style. So they don't have that big block around it, making it a 14-foot sign. Has there been anybody else that has done that to date in this? Yes, district? uh Three parcels or two parcels south of that ATS automation went through this process, I believe last year or the year before. Thank you. And the applicant is here if, if you have any questions. Is, is there anybody? Go ahead. Anybody wants to speak on behalf of this case? I can answer any questions. Uh, you want to step up to the podium, yeah. name, address, and Firm that you missed one. My name's Chris Rose, 650 Light and Cork in Ohio, 43230, and I have been sworn in. Uh, I am the representative of the Wicca uh, Technologies. Uh, I am from Columbus Sign. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. We had previously worked on the ATS sign. Um, this is very similar as the client had seen that uh, being close to them and, and enjoyed the style. We feel that it fits and, and conditional use or variance is really just strained from, I guess, Creekside standards that were set um, at some point. And this is what the client had requested and what we drew up based on their requests and observation of other signs close to it. Thank you. I notice the sign is uh, lighted uh, from a spotlight on either side, right? Externally illuminated with floodlights, yeah. yes, sir. And what's the temperature of that light? It would be a warm 3500 Anybody else have any questions? Does anybody want to make a motion on this one? I 
I'll make a motion. We need to. It's con the conditional and the variance. Doesn't matter which one goes first. The variance would like need to go first. Exactly. So yeah, based on the discussion here, the input, the uh, information that's in the package here, um, I move to approve case number VA twenty two eleven for the property located Green Meadows Drive, seeking area variance from presuming case eleven zero zero five five. I'll second. A uh, motion made by Mr. Shipley to approve variance case VA-22-11. Second by Mr. Oster. Those voting, Mr. Trevs? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes. And I'll make the motion to approve the conditional use application for VACU-22-11. Second. Motion made by Mr. Oster to approve conditional use KCU-22-11. Seconded by Mr. Trevs. Is voting Mr. Trevs? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, the next case on the agenda is variance case VA-22-10. Um, I'm putting the area variance application that was revised, uh, was submitted to you, uh, be it Township Exhibit 1. And then I'll read uh, Township Exhibit 2 is the staff report, which I will read uh, and go through. Uh, the applicant and owner is Ramakrishna Narayanam. Uh, the agent is Desmond Cullimore. Uh, the site is 1387 Scarlet Avenue, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035. Uh, the parcel ID number is 318-240-38006-000. That's zone single family plan residential district. Uh, they're seeking an area variance from rezoning case 12451, the states of Glen Oak, for an already constructed addition to encroach into the rear yard setback. Uh, the applicants request an area variance uh, for an already constructed addition to encroach 13 feet and 9 inches into the 35 feet rear yard setback in an area zone single family plan residential district. The surrounding areas uh, to the north, south, east, and west are all zoned single family plan residential districts. Uh, to the north is single family residences, to the south is Scarlet Avenue, and then single family residences, and then the east and west are, are both single family residences. Uh, the history of, the, of this request on um, December 30th of 2021, zoning staff responded to an inquiry on this property by the contractor. Uh, the, the contractor says they would like to construct a 16 feet by 15 feet 4 inch addition to the rear of the house. Uh, Mr. Beard respond with the setbacks for that site and that this project would need an area variance before a zoning permit could be issued based on the size of the project. Now, Mr. Beard also provided the necessary materials to apply for an area variance. Uh, exhibit one. Uh, exhibit one in the staff report is the initial contact with the, the contractor um, at the time uh, of this, the staff report is written. The contractor was the applicant of the variance. Uh, now it is the property owner with an agent. Um, this shows the email uh, that we received from the contractor with the a plan sketched up. And then the next one is the response, <laughs> email response uh, from Mr. Beard to the contractor with stating what was needed. Uh, 
<clears throat> no contact uh, with the township had been made regarding uh, this property until April of 2022 when township staff received an inquiry about ongoing construction at the subject property. Mr. Wimpkin went out to inspect on April 15th of 2022. Uh, exhibit 2 shows the photos taken at that time. During the site inspection, Mr. Wimpkin talked to the contractor on site. At that time, no zoning permit or area variance had been applied for or approved. Now, this was mentioned to the contractor, and they responded with they had all necessary approval from the HOA, Delaware City, and Delaware County. Now, Mr. Wimpkin noted that the property does not fall under the jurisdiction of the City of Delaware, so a permit would need to be issued by Orange Township for construction to continue. Now, Mr. Wimpkin gave him instructions on how to apply for both the residential application and the area variance application. Uh, exhibit 2 is a site photo that was taken April 15th of 2022. <clears throat> On April 19th, the contractor reached out to Mr. Wimpkin to apply for the residential addition permit. Exhibit 3 shows the email history. None of the materials mentioned were ever submitted to the Township Zoning Department. A permit was not applied for on this project until May 4th of 2022. Uh, exhibit 4 shows the online permit application. Uh, so Exhibit 3 is emails from April 19th of 2022. And then Exhibit 4 is the online permit applied for on May 4th uh, with the highlighted showing the permit date uh, and the status of the permit is being pending. On May 11th, 2022, Township staff had emailed the applicant notifying them that they still needed to pay for the permit as well as needing a scaled site plan to ensure the construction meets the setback requirements. It is also noted in this email that an area variance wouldn't be needed since the construction encroaches into the setbacks. Payment for the residential addition was received May 18, 2022. <clears throat> no area variance application was received before the deadline to be heard on the June meeting schedule. On June 8, 2022, Mr. Wimpkin went out to inspect the site again to see if progress on the project had occurred. Since there had been noticeable progress in a violation case 20220015 was started. Site photos from this visit can be seen in Exhibit 5. On both June 9th of 2022 and July 11th of 2022, Mr. Wimpkin had reached out to the County Building and Safety Department and since the applicant and contractor had mentioned they'd received county approval. The county responded that they had no permits for this address and would send someone out to inspect. Exhibit 6 shows this email. So Exhibit 5 are site photos that were taken June 8th of 2022 from the side of the house. <clears throat> and then on the rear of the house uh, with the wooden walkout and stairs. And then Exhibit 6 is emails from the County Building Safety Department on June 9th, 2022 and July 11th, 2022. Notification that the violation letter was received by the property owner was verified via phone call uh, to Mr. Wimpkin stating that they had no knowledge of the violation and material sent by the property owner, the HOA had not issued approval as of June 21st, 2022. As of August 10th, no additional materials were sent to the township staff providing HOA or county approval. A revised variance application was received August 10th of 2022 with an agent representing the property owner. Now for the staff review for the variance request, it's a rear yard setback. It's an area variance from rezoning case 12451. It states at Glen Oak Single Family Plain Residential District. The rear yard setback requirement is 35 feet. The constructed structure encroaches 13 feet and 9 inches into the 35 feet rear yard setback. This is roughly a 39% variance request from rezoning case 12451, the states of Glen Oak SFPRD. Exhibit 7 is the staff site plan showing constructed addition dimensions measured during a site visit. Exhibit 8 are site photos that were taken July 11th, 2022. 
Uh, photo one uh, shows the eastern wall of the constructed addition is flush with the existing house, which complies with the east side yard setbacks. Photo two shows the constructed addition and its position relative to the rear yard setback. The cone shown in the exhibit in photo two is 37 feet and 6 inches from the house. This dimension was shown on the approved permit for the original home. <clears throat> then you have photo 3 that shows the measurement of 16 feet 3 inches. And then photo 4 is also showing the measurement. Uh, they are of the western wall of the constructed addition. Uh, the side structure was 16 feet 3 inches on the revised site plan submitted by the contractor. This measurement was labeled as 15 feet. Given the new side measurement of 16 feet 3 inches, the amount of the encroachment of the rear yard setback would be increased from 12 feet 6 inches to 13 feet and 9 inches. And you have <coughs> photo 5 and photo 6 in the staff report. Uh, to show the measurements of the northern wall of the constructed addition. This side of the structure was measured at 15 feet and 8 inches. On the revised site plan submitted by the contractor, this measurement was labeled as 16 feet. Photo 7 shows the rear view of the home with the constructed addition. And then <coughs> I provided uh, staff the board members uh, with township exhibit three uh, which is all of the resident comments that we have received by email uh, since this beginning of the application process that we received uh, went back from july 11th of 2022 uh, to august 16th of 2022 and then exhibit four for the township is uh, a GIS map uh, that shows the applicant property owner uh, property is in blue uh, letters that were in support uh, are in green uh, if they weren't in support they're in red and then the rest are just parcels of the other houses that we did not receive any comments from <clears throat> that is all that staff has at this time Is there anybody that's going to speak on this case? Yes, sir. I am Desmond Cullimore, 3664 Hickory Rock Drive, Powell, Ohio. I am a legal counsel to Priest Ramakrishna uh, Narayanam, and uh, I'm also listed as an agent on this variance application. I was, uh, I was called once um, Priest Ramakrishna realized the, uh, the gravity of the situation that uh, had unfolded here. I would like to start off by, by saying I'd like to have some brief introductory comments first, but I'd like you to hear from Priest Ramakrishna himself. Um, the staff report um, is excellent as it is prepared, but it's really a, a report prepared as a communication between the township and this contractor. That was retained by Priest Ram Krishna, and I'd like you to hear from him. I'd like to follow that up with, <clears throat> excuse me, some brief summary comments, and then um, and then issue uh, what we believe is a good proposal to resolve this particular situation. Uh, it's a very unfortunate situation. It is one that is not the making of Priest Ram Krishna. Uh, this is not a situation where you have a property owner who is knowingly and actively evading a regulation and trying to come to you to beg forgiveness instead of getting permission to begin with. That is not the situation. This is a situation where um, Priest Ramakrishna and his family put their faith in a contractor. Um, Priest Ramakrishna is not experienced in construction, uh, nor is anyone in his family like most residents that are dealing with these situations, they reach out to uh, an appropriate design professional or a contractor to guide them through these, these uh, processes. The board and, and staff are very familiar with a lot of these regulations, and it's, uh, that's a situation where uh, 
Um, it's common for you to see uh, these regulations in play, but typical residents just don't, don't see these regulations in play. So it's unfortunate when someone puts their trust in a contractor to guide them through this process and, and deals with this type of situation. It's very clear, and, and I can tell you I am still investigating the situation as far as what this contractor did, when, and how they did it. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about that <clears throat> because that's uh, for a, a different venue. But there is no doubt that a variance wasn't uh, applied for. The contractor did know about it in December of 2021 before the contract was signed with Priest Ramakrishna. The contractor never told Priest Ramakrishna that a variance would be required. They entered into a contract after uh, Priest Ramakrishna and his family contacted references that were provided by the contractor. And um, for a brief time, there were discussions about what are the, the requirements at play here. And Priest Ramakrishna was informed that all approvals and permits were obtained. And um, soon after that, construction began. But I'd like to uh, ask Priest Ramakrishna some questions here, as opposed to having him come up and, and giving a presentation. I would like to ask him specific questions that are pertinent to what we're dealing with here. And, uh, I wonder if Priest Ramakrishna, if you could test your mic and introduce yourself to the board. <laughs> My name is Ramakrishna Narayan. I live 1387 Scarlet Avenue, Lewis Center, Ohio, 43035. <clears throat> Thank you, Priest Ramakrishna. Did you affirm Ramakrishna. that you've been sworn in? Sir? Did you affirm that you've been sworn in? Yes, I did. Yeah. Um, Priest Ramakrishna, can you let the board know if you were familiar with the regulations related to uh, the need for variances or permitting? Um, before this project even even began, no, actually the uh, our family want to make a addition room addition and decide decided to do that in November. First we were shopping it, and then uh, during Thanksgiving day we were able to contact this uh, finance construction and then we called him. So can give uh, the estimation. The person have come and then he gave the estimation. Then. Uh, can you please provide some referrals? Then we can contact. Then, um, then we'll make the decision. That's what we said in November. Then he provided few referrals. Then we contact them. Uh, everybody said like uh, he's nice, and then so then we liked it. Then in December, um, we called him back, and then we asked him what what is the next steps. He said like uh, you have to provide thirty three percent down then we can uh, i can start applying for the all the approvals i need to, i did not know where to get the approvals also he said like i had to go to the hoa and then township and then county it, it will take uh, two to three weeks time so once uh, i get all the approvals then i will start working on that that is the what he said and december 23rd or 20th then we gave him the down payment then January 5th or something, he came back. Then he said, uh, I have uh, uh, like a uh, board meet, HOA board meets monthly once. Uh, but unfortunately, I missed this month. Then it will take another month to, uh, for the next meeting only, they are going to put our, uh, up like a, our subject. So then I'm waiting for that. Then, uh, meanwhile, I'm working with the township and all those things. That's what he said. So then we did not follow up anything. Then we just want to do slowly. Uh, around February, mid-February, I think he came. I got all the approvals. Then he started to the construction. So uh, till, um, I think, April 15th or something, uh, mid-April, then I got an email from the uh, HOA, then it's stating like a, um, you need to have approval or something like that. Then immediately I forwarded that email to the contractor. Uh, he said, I have already got the approvals. I took care of this. Don't worry about it. That is the word. Uh, he's, uh, he replied to me that email. Then I thought, okay. 
so then june 15th around uh, we got a officer from the um count and uh, from the county and then i was out of town then he came and then i want to inspect the house uh, like a something like that um uh, a construction i want to inspect then he's um he's looked around and then he said this is illegal construction you did not have any approval she my wife told him look like, we got all the approvals uh because my contractor told me then uh he said no ma'am so then nothing i can do so what can we do then you have to work with the township hoa that's what he said then after two days we got a letter from the uh county office stop order so then uh, uh i saw that and then my wife called the jeff first time in june mid june then uh, we got a letter what is this something then jeff said no you did not get approval from the township or something like that then uh, i called my contractor i got this letter what is going on he said we got all the i pull all the permits in last year like in december don't worry like that's what he said um then my wife suggests then why can't we go to uh, our, uh township hall directly and then why can't we ask them that? then we both came to the uh, jeff and the, explain what uh, happened so he said you did not have any approvals then i was very surprised first time i came to know like it is that then i called the contractor so then um we invited him uh, he said like I'm, he was just uh, uh, yelling at jeff i think oh i have pulled all the approvals um, you are telling me no i did not approve that's what he said then um then i call to then what i have to do then you have to submit papers and everything that's what jeff said then i call to the township i got a notice this what i have to do then he said we have to wait for from the whatever the township says um uh, until that i will make a note you call me that's what township uh, account he said um then uh, jeff, he was just telling uh, jeff a uh, contractor telling to the jeff actually i have pulled all the permits from you only not only that i have all the sealed permits from the county and everything uh, he said like a jeff said that time without we approve county won't approve that is the word he used uh, then he said no i don't then after that i said like a why he was jeff was emailing him like can you provide all the documents what you have approvals then i want to produce to the board or something like that um he did not reply i have everything i do not want to then i pleased him can you please provide the documents we will have the at least uh, now we can process he said uh, um i have everything but i do not want to provide to the board they will make um, they will find the loopholes or something like that i will provide during the meeting i have all the approvals that is the what he said not only that when uh, like a, after the uh, pouring the concrete then he said inspector have come and then approved uh, like a uh, approved the um like a process then after the framing inspector have come and then approved this then i did not see the inspector like a how he approved he, he approved through the phone that is the what he said i did not know how they process how they approve also that is also i told him then one day i was on the phone and then all the electric trans he he was uh like a acting he was um on the phone uh, uh like an uh, inspector i i was he was acting like i was talking to the inspector then everything went he was showing through the whatsapp or something video call uh, then i said like a, oh okay then we are going through the process that's the what happened i be i trusted him and then uh priest rama krishna how much have you paid this contractor so far so far 42000 42,000. Um and it, the addition's not complete, correct? No. <clears throat> Have you reviewed the public comments that were submitted for this variance hearing? Yes. What was your uh It's your summary of the overall response everybody is supported one or two I again stated mm-hmm. but uh, most of them supported so okay. <clears throat> well, well we'll uh Brett I think if you can if you wouldn't mind pulling up that that presentation I'll be uh 
showing some photos here uh, pretty soon. But, you know, this is a situation that is uh, extremely unfortunate. I have been in contact with the uh, Delaware County Building Safety Department to talk to them about this and their involvement and the process moving forward should a variance uh, be granted um, this evening. And, uh, you know, I did learn some very interesting things uh, from from the county. Um, and just quickly, it doesn't relate to this uh, variance, but it does uh, on some of my, my, my key uh, points I want to make next. But the county informed me that there was one particular contractor, um, not this contractor we're dealing with now, who was uh, going around the county building decks for families. And that happened to be all those families, 10 of them, happened to be Hindu families. And um, nine of those decks had to be removed because they were just structurally unsafe. They just um, couldn't stand the way they were. One, they were able to uh, reverse engineer the process, so to speak, and give approvals for that particular deck. But um, it's uh, it's a situation that I bring up because it's uh, it was new to me that there that, that contractor a contractor somewhere in, the, in Delaware County would be preying upon some of the the, the weakest people that they could prey upon. Um, if if you've ever known anyone who is a member of the Hindu religion, they're extremely peaceful. Uh, people um, and very trusting people. So uh, it's very unfortunate that that has to happen. Uh, and the reason why I bring that up, <clears throat> when I was thinking through this, you know, how could this have been avoided? How can it be avoided in the future? I don't think this is a situation that sets a sort of precedent because speaking with staff um, in, in their time here working for Orange Township, they have never seen a situation like this before. I mean, this is an extremely rare uh, situation and a very significant situation. Um, but still, it begs the question, how do you try to address these types of issues in the past? We've talked about communication already. Um, educating residents is always a good idea. Uh, the problem there is, again, typical residents just don't understand this complicated process that is zoning planning regulatory nature and they seek professionals whether it be design professionals attorneys contractors etc um, but in this case there's also an issue of communication because we have this contractor in december of 2021 being told there needs to be a variance in april april 15th there's an inspection performed and clearly that contractor um, did not move forward to get any sort of variance for this uh, uh, project. Um, but the contractor was told that, hey, you can't do this. Basically, it's a, hey, we told you in December you couldn't do it. Now we caught you. You can't do this. But no one came to Priest Ramakrishna and told him what was going on. And I think, and that's not a criticism of Orange Township or staff because they have been excellent to work with through this uh, process and, has, and have been nothing but um, supportive of uh, Priest Ramakrishna in answering any questions he may have. But it's, the, it's a situation with communication that the property owner needs to be informed as soon as these types of situations um, occur. And that doesn't always happen even in other municipalities and, and, and townships. Um, staff or many of those, if, if you were to question them, would likely say, well, we deal with contractors directly all the time. It's just the way things work, and, and things have always uh, worked fine. So that's, uh, that's just food for thought on the communication issue. But one uh, serious issue that, that I think the township should consider with regard to the regulations is the whole concept of contractor licensing and requirements for bonding. Because this particular contractor, when confronted with this situation, instead of saying, but I got all the approvals, I got all the permits, I got everything, is now saying there's miscommunication within my office. I was confused. There is, this is my first big project in Delaware County. So we're starting to get that type of 
response from the contractor. And again, if, if needed, we'll, you know, we can push that and, and find out even more information uh, about that. But the whole concept of contractor licensing in other jurisdictions is the jurisdiction will, will lay out exactly what a contractor must do. In some cases, even take a test mm -hmm. to explain to the jurisdiction exactly what the process is and what they're supposed to be doing. And it's only then, once a contractor proves himself, basically, that they're issued a license to do work in that jurisdiction. In some jurisdictions, there's also bonding requirements. In a situation like this, uh, there's, uh, there may very well be no financial backing to, to assist Priest Ramakrishna should he even prevail in any sort of litigation against this contractor. Uh, which is certainly a direction that uh, this potentially could could head in. Um, but with that bonding requirement, there might be certain financial um, obligations that a contractor must stand behind. And that helps keep contractors honest because now they've got a bond. And if their surety has to come in and pay money, the surety can go after the contractor. And, and, and many times it's going after the contractor's personal assets because they have what's called a general indemnity agreement that they enter into with contractors that says, if I have to pay money, I'm coming after your company, but I'm also coming after you personally because you're signing personally on, on the line. So these are all mechanisms that can be put into place to uh, keep folks on the right path. Um, there can also be um, regulatory provisions put in place to fine contractors who violate these provisions to ban contractors from working in your jurisdiction if you have this type of issue. So that's all to say, I don't view this as uh, passing, granting this variance, approving this variance as any sort of precedent due to the unique nature of the situation, but also steps that can be taken in, in the future to kind of tighten things up and make sure that it, the residents can be protected from this type of behavior uh, in the future, and it can be caught very early because this this very well could have happened to anybody in this in this township, and is very unfortunate. <clears throat> um, I would like to touch on the uh, the elements that that you are to consider tonight. I know that we've uh, we've put this information in more detail in the application itself, but I would like to touch on on those elements before going into what we're proposing here for this, uh, this variance. But with regard to the public interest, um, there has been um, many comments submitted. Overwhelmingly, those comments are in favor of granting the variance. There are two comments. Let me see if I can use my movie. I don't know if that'll show up on the screen. It absorbs it. It does. I'm glad I color-coded this. Um, if you look at this, the star is, in fact, Priest Ramakrishna's home, where the addition was, was built. Uh, all of the green dots that you are seeing are people who have written in in support of granting the variance. Uh, there are a couple of lighter green dots there. Uh, one, the one on the lower left, has actually, I believe, submitted a, uh, a letter in support that may match the map that you're looking at in front of you that was provided by Jeff. Uh, the one directly east, or excuse me, directly west of Ra Priest Ramakrishna's home. Um, Priest Ramakrishna has spoke to this resident. They are in favor of the variance, but they haven't submitted anything in writing. So, but we just wanted to, to let you know that that's the case. And Priest Ramakrishna, did that? Did you indeed speak with that that resident directly west to your of your home? Uh, yes, yes. You did? Okay. And they are in support? Yes. Um, <clears throat> the uh, orange dot that you're seeing there, a few houses down on the other um, side, that is um, Mr. Brad Fisher, who submitted a comment. I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Fisher about his comments um, because his comments evolved around building code violations and how he saw this constructed in the evenings and was very suspicious about it, didn't like the way certain things looked. And uh, I wanted to speak with him and ask him if, if this was constructed and was indeed 
inspected by the building department and it was built to build building code, would you, would you object to this variance? And um, he indicated to me that he's moving. So he's not gonna be in this, uh, in this neighborhood anymore, but he does not object to the variance other than the fact that he wants to see it up to building code. And it's our proposition that in, in my conversations with the building department, that one of the next steps is to indeed get certain plans in place, stamped by professionals, and go through the inspection process and make sure that everything is, is up to code. And they are willing to work with Priest Ramakrishna to make that happen. Uh, but there will be additional work that's necessary to make sure that that's done. So I put that in orange just as a, yes, the letter appears to be in opposition, but it's on a, a specific issue, which is the building code violations, which will, which will certainly be taken care of um, in, in the future. Uh, but the, the, the one family in opposition is the, uh, the Dunnings that live directly behind Priest Ramakrishna. I had an opportunity to speak with Mr. Dunning briefly the other day um, about um, what could be done. Because uh, if you read the Dunnings letter, their concern is about the, the privacy aspect of it. This encroachment, the privacy, um, the fact that uh, you know, people will be in this room and looking straight down on, on their property. Um, and I believe and, and have seen in the past that there are ways to address this, the issue of, of privacy. And uh, we wanted to sit down and speak with the Dunnings to see if we could come to some sort of agreement to get their support for this variance tonight. Unfortunately, we have, didn't have the opportunity to, in a short time frame, to really sit down and talk about the details. But tonight we do have what we believe is, um, is a proposal that addresses their concerns that they, they have. And uh, we can uh, speak speak to you about that here shortly. Um, but there is overwhelming support, so the public interest has been uh, addressed. The special conditions that we're dealing with here is this unique situation where we have a, a resident um, who has been led down a path um, by a contractor that they should have never been, been through, been down. And the result of, of not granting this variance is, is basically a directive to tear down this addition. And over $42,000 has already been spent in, uh, in building that addition. Um, that would be a significant um, economic loss, economic waste to Priest Ramakrishna, not to mention the additional cost of paying someone to take it down and put it back the way that it, that it was. Not to mention the fact that the only uh, remedy at that point is to go down the path of litigation to try to recover against this contractor for the position that Priest Ramakrishna has been placed in. So that is uh, certainly what I would consider a special condition under these circumstances. Um, the spirit of the resolution, <clears throat> the zoning resolution, will certainly be observed once we get to the proposal. We'll show you what we're, what we're looking at doing. It's rearranging this addition to, uh, in, the, in the vein of trying to increase the privacy to the Dunnings residents as much as possible. And as a matter of fact, there should be more privacy after this uh, project is complete than before. And I'll get to that once, once we have a chance to go through some of the pictures that we have up here. Um, substantial justice. Um, variance requires that substantial justice be done. We think substantial justice will be done in granting this uh, variance in the sense that the, uh, it avoids the economic waste and the potential cost of litigation to Priest Ramakrishna. It also avoids the uh, staff time, uh, not only Orange County, but the county and others who have been involved over the past um, eight months or so involved in litigation with depositions and the like and, and, and records. It's um, if you've ever been involved in litigation, it's not fun and it takes it just takes up everybody's time. We think that is um, can be controlled as much as possible by trying to find a resolution to this that is um, that is in the best interests of uh, of everybody. Um, there's the issue of reasonable return. 
we're dealing with uh, the addition of uh, the prayer room, which is, uh, we'll see some more pictures of it here shortly, but it is an addition to the home. It meets the essential character and look of, of the existing home, as, as well as the community. And with the addition of the square footage, uh, it only makes logical sense that the property value will increase. And there's also been many people who have voiced their opinion that this would be uh, a valuable addition to the community to have this, uh, this addition added on to this home. We, uh, we don't believe that the variance is substantial. I know that uh, there's been talk about 39% and this issue of the percentages. Um, we like to look, view it as this isn't, say, 39%. This is 13 feet, 9 inches. It is 13 feet, 9 inches, and there will be 21 feet between this addition and the property line. Mm -hmm. And with some of the um, proposals we have to meet the privacy, we think that mitigates any of these issues of, uh, of any sort of uh, uh, substantial nature of this, of this variance. Uh, again, the character of the neighborhood will not be altered, um, let alone substantially altered, which is the, which is the, uh, the metric in this uh, element. Um, certainly won't be altered because it, it looks exactly the same as the house it fits in. We have had conversations with the Homeowners Association. Um, they don't have an issue with the appearance of it, the aesthetics of it. I've spoken with them. I've spoken with their legal counsel. Uh, they, are, they have not approved this yet only because their attorney's advice was wait till after the variance hearing. Uh, but otherwise, they have made statements uh, as, uh, as recently as yesterday in correspondence that this is, this is aesthetic. You know, we're looking at the aesthetics here, and I've had a conversation with them. They, they don't view the aesthetics as an issue. Granted, it's not 100% complete yet. There's, there's some things that need to be done um, to, to touch up around the, uh, the addition itself. Um, as far as uh, substantial detriment to other properties, again, we have multiple people um, voicing their support for this variance. Uh, so we don't believe there's a substantial detriment there. Uh, we do understand that Dunnings have concerns. Um, even, even if those concerns are, are, are not met 100% to their liking, um, and they view that as a detriment, I, we do not view that as a substantial detriment. But that said, Mr. Ramakrishnan has many times voiced to me that he wants to make sure that these concerns of the Dunnings are addressed as best um, they can. So with that, um, what we are proposing is to not grant the variance outright, but to grant a conditional a conditional approval of the variance um, based on some changes and modifications that Priest Ramakrishna would, want, would like to make to the addition to address these privacy concerns. And what we want to do is take a look here. I know if you look at the staff report, a lot of the pictures are very close up, and it's 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 hard to really gauge exactly, you know, what we're dealing with as far as the scope of of, uh, of property and land that we're dealing with here. Uh, this uh, red line that you see here drawn in there is that uh, my best effort at drawing where the property line is based on where the cone is pictured in the photo and in the staff report. So there's uh, I mean there's a significant distance uh, between the two homes. Uh, you know, granted, this is in this entire neighborhood. These homes are generally, uh, you know, fairly close together, but but there's there's definitely some space uh, to deal with here. And what we are looking at is um, adding in some screening um, and moving the door that is on the rear of it now, the glass double door that's on the back. This was a very similar door that was on the existing structure before the addition was placed. It was just pushed forward. And in the course of my conversations with Mr. Dunning, that was one of those focuses when we got this door and this glass and a big window and everyone can see right down on us and we can see right in. The, the best way to deal with that is well, let's move the door. Let's move that door from the rear and move it to the west side of the addition and let's add some screening along the front of this 
so that you won't be able to see the addition at all when you are stepping back on Priest Ramakrishna's property or even back on the Dunning's property, which is the ultimate uh, goal here. And if you look in the background past the cone there, you'll see some landscaping on the, uh, the rear property line of um, the Dunning's neighbor. And uh, those types of trees that you see there, uh, the tall ones in the back, we believe those are the same types of trees that we're, we're uh, recommending here, which is the American pillar um, arborvitae tree. They're very narrow. They're very tall. They're great at screening. And I know that because, and here's a picture of the American pillar arborvitae, um, very tall, very lush trees. Um, this is a property I have where there is uh, homes are close close together. I have many um, American pillar arborvitaes trees use the screening. This is really just kind of to give you an effect of what these trees can do when you're looking at a at a building. They can definitely shield and screen uh, a lot of features even something as, as large as a building. And in this case, we have an addition, which is certainly not as tall as some of these, uh, these homes here. As far as the interior is concerned, this is pictures from the uh, interior of Priest Ramakrishna's home. You'll see those double doors um, back there in the distance. Uh, we're proposing moving those to the left, which would be the west side. And then putting in some windows on the side where the doors are being removed, but making those windows small and up high to allow light in, but at the same time, not allow someone to be standing there looking out at, uh, at anything that's going on in the backyard. And that combined with the, with the screening in the front, we're really dealing with a situation where the, the privacy factor will be better after this addition than it was prior to the addition. Prior to the addition, Priest Ramakrishna and his family could stand in that double door and stare at the Dunnings as they were on their back deck, and the Dunnings would be able to see right into Ramakrishna's home. In this type of situation, no one will be able to see either, either of each other with this screening and the, the modification of the, uh, of the addition as it stands. So, the uh, conditional approval of the variance, we're asking that screening will be provided with trees capable of reaching the height and width of the addition. We are proposing to use American Pillar Arborvitae. If, uh, if the board or the Dunnings feel that something different can be in a place that would be an improvement above the American Pillar, Priest Ramakrishna is more than willing to, to work with folks to put the, the screening in that, that um, people feel are appropriate or is appropriate. Um, the second condition is that the rear, rear sliding glass door will be relocated to the west side of the addition mm -hmm. and the windows facing the rear will be reduced in size to improve privacy concerns mm -hmm. and again make it more private than it, than it was before. And the third condition that we are proposing is that the Delaware County Building Safety Department will be consulted and Priest Ramakrishna will work with them uh, and make sure that work is performed as necessary to ensure that the addition meets all building code. And in lieu of uh, if it's the board's um, desire or there's a motion to deny the variance outright tonight, um, our request would be that uh, if there are any questions or reasons for that denial, uh, any questions that need to be answered, any further research that needs to be done, uh, we would uh, request that you, instead of denying the variance outright, uh, tabling the variance to give Priest Ramakrishna time to answer those questions or dive into any of those details that you have. But as it stands right now, we're requesting that conditional approval of this variance based on the three uh, conditions that I have put before you. 
with that, I appreciate you letting me uh, speak with you for this long. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Do you have any more pictures of the exterior, or is it the same as our pictures at the present time? Um, we have, a, there's a picture of the exterior kind of looking down the, the uh, west side to kind of just gauge, you know, what type of vegetation is in the back as far as screening that kind of are in line with that. If you look down, it's hard to see now because you can't zoom in, but there are uh, some plantings of trees that are kind of in line with that general alignment we're looking for here. I was kind of puzzled because the foundation did not come out to the edge of the structure. Yeah. As I've seen mm -hmm. as normal. And there is, and I don't know how big that is, just looking at it from the picture, there is a big opening that goes all the way through there. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't think that's good. No, I But there's, there's all kinds of that kind of... There, there certainly is. Visual look and concern, obviously. The neighbors even thought so, too. Yeah, there, there certainly is, and uh, that is not my picture there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and it's hopefully you've already looked to see if this guy was even licensed. Um, we have, we don't know what this individual has as far as any sort of licensure generally as a general contractor. Um, they're not necessarily required to be licensed. If there's licenses in Ohio, it's usually for the, the uh, HVAC, the electric and other, which would have been primarily subcontractors to this general contractor. Um, which is which is even more disturbing in the sense that you know you hire a contractor. If it's a general contractor, that's the general contractor's job to bring the right people to the table to understand the process and to take you through the process. That's really what the general contractor is there for, as opposed to just hiring. Chris right. Ramakrishna could have hired his individual subcontractors if he knew how to manage a project. Uh, but to address your question with the building code, I have had conversations with the. Uh, Delaware County Building Safety Department, and we specifically spoke about the foundation issue. We spoke about how that looks right there, and what I'm what I'm being told is um, having posts as as um, um, as a matter of fact. It's uh, when we were looking at from the side. <laughs> There's that overhang. If there is post there, it is very rare for that to be permitted. It is possible if an engineer stamps drawings and shows that it is structurally sound to do that. Uh, and then coverings can be put similar tape, say, to the front of it where you see the siding come all the way down. Then coverings can be put on. But if that's not structurally sound, then this is a situation where the foundation would need to be extended out. There's also the issue of the depth of the foundation. We don't know yet what the depth of the foundation is, and the building Correct. department will need to dig down to make sure that we're dealing with 36 foot or 36 inch depth. It's supposed foundation. to be about a foot below the frost line. <clears throat> yeah. And yeah, that would yeah. be every bit of that. But and there was a, there's a, a many many pictures taken throughout the construction, oddly enough, um, by the contractor. More pictures than I've seen a contractor take of their own work right during construction. Uh, but the building department has seen many of those pictures, and they they see things that look okay, and they see things that they have questions about. Mm -hmm. So part of this process of dealing with the building department is going to be getting in there, exposing some of the issues. Especially one of the concerns is how the building is attached. The addition is attached to the main building. So these are all things that are going to be looked at. It's going to be a, there's going to be a fine tooth comb by, by the county. Um, they have told me expressly that they're going to take this issue very seriously because they're not about to prove anything done by a contractor that has done this type of um, this work. But I mean that that said, there's the um, it is a part of the process. It's a part of the process that uh, cannot be avoided. Should not have in the first place but certainly can't be avoided at this point now that the property owner actually understands what is going on and we have been in direct contact with the building department. So, so there's no part of that that has been inspected and approved at all? Electrical, no. HVAC? No, there's, there has been nothing. There has 
priest Ramakrishna mentioned to you earlier about him questioning, questioned about why he hasn't seen anybody here to look at anything. And the contractor had the phone on a Zoom call. Who, who was on the other end of the Zoom call? I don't know, and I intend to find out if need be. But um, he was told that he was getting it inspected. And it was not inspected. It could not have been expected. I talked to the building uh, department, asked if anyone expected, inspected it, and they said absolutely not. No one would go out there and inspect it unless it was in our system. How long have you lived in the neighborhood, sir? Six and a half years. Six and a half years. Yeah. You've never had any dealings with the HOA in the past? No, never. Do you pay the HOA? Yes. Okay. I do. <laughs> First person you check with to see if you pay. <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's the reason I brought that point right. up. Not that it. We're all in HOAs, I think. Probably most of us. You know, <laughs> the HOA has to approve you to put a new bush in your yard. That's mm -hmm. good. I mean, almost anything, they have to give you an approval for that. In my HOA, if you've got Port Walls Foundation, you would have to have Port Walls Foundation under. Mm -hmm. A match to, you know, everything. I, I mean, all building materials have to match. Yeah. So you can tell right away that that's blocked. And like you <laughs> said, we don't know how well or how deep. Or Here, we, our responsibility is not to weigh in on construction or HVAC or any of that. We're just looking at the variance and property lines, right? That's, Correct. That's all. But we also take in the complaints. We also have to view the people that had concerns. Okay. But did, I mean, so we had one, one person. There was basically two people. And honestly, I could see their concerns. The uh, diagram shows the drainage back at the back. Has that been approved by anyone that this building is not going to be with water draining? Um, it is not. The building is not within the drainage easement. It is only encroaching into the, um, the setback. Yeah. There, there's approximately, I believe, one and a half feet. And I think perhaps uh, staff would, would know the exact measurement there. There's about one and a half feet or so, maybe two. Um, I, I don't know offhand. Don't we normally get from or someone. Yeah. Yeah. Not with water. Water. Sort of with, with yeah, same. with the, it's not in the easement. And it's even if it is in the easement, yeah. it, we don't have yeah. authority to say it can't go in an easement. It's just it, well it goes I mean, up on the property owners, you know, their their option to get right. well in, right. in in a perfect world and a real contractor, you know, they would have tied in the gutters. Sure. To, to the system, but this kind of makes you wonder. But, you know, and I think that's where all the concern came from the neighbors too, was yeah. the way in which it was being done. Yeah, and I, I certainly understand when I spoke with Mr. Fisher, is, and again, his primary complaint was um, code violation concerns. Sure. So, I mean, we're, our, our position at this point is, as, as long as we're committing to make sure that we work hand in hand with the county, make sure that there are no code violations and everything is done the way it should be, that that would address Mr. Fisher's concern uh, in that sense. And of course, um, with, uh, with the Dunnings and, and their concern about privacy, we were um, just putting our heads together, trying to figure out the best possible way to make, make this even better and more private than it was before this edition came on. I have a question about the American Armed Fighting. Mm -hmm. At what height would you spy them? What's the maximum height and width they will be, and when will they die? Um, I can tell you that the American pillars that are in on my property that you saw there have been there for 22 years, I believe. I believe that's very close to their life. I did not want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can tell you they're, they're, they're very uh, lush, very healthy, and uh, they, 
they can grow um, extremely tall. I know this 16 plus feet, I believe, is pictures of some that I've been seeing. Um, and as far as buying them new, you can get them small or you can get well, them which big. Which would help yeah. your case, but yeah. uh, you would have to have them probably 12 feet high to block while you're moving the doors to them. Yeah, there, I mean, there certainly could be a situation. There's going to be some maximum height that you can buy them at, and there's going to be not some time to grow. So it, it may not be uh, instantaneous. Yeah, and the width of them as well. So it may not be instantaneous, but we can certainly do the best that we can to put in what is is commercially available to put it in there. And that, But that also... The issue of the, the changing of the windows is another component of that privacy as well. So yes, perhaps there might be some some visual of the addition while the trees are growing, but everything's blocked out. No one's staring down on the property behind them. No one's looking into the house. There'll still be some there'll still be privacy there. And that brings us back to what you mentioned a second ago. Is the the issue is the variance. Um, and and sir, I you know I, I heard clearly a little while ago you, you mentioned it. Um, it's thirty nine percent. You don't look at that as a substantial number, but that's substantial. It's thirty nine percent. The uh, and for for this board, anything twenty over twenty five percent is considered substantial. So that and that's the issue that that's the main issue that that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So mitigating factors. Um, Encroaching into setbacks, um, screening, moving doors, privacy um, certainly come into play. But the issue is the 39%, the variance in the 39% on a structure with $42,000 sunk into it already that's already there. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the difficult, uh, difficulty, I think. Are there other um, variances in the neighborhood that approach this? Uh, with staff's uh, review of these properties in the area, that there were none that had variances. Um, no, the none that we can find on record. Uh, there are some that appear to have some patios that were approved during the final certificate of zoning compliance um, that were not originally on the permits, but were were approved as part of the final compliance. Um, but looking at the aerial and looking at the permits, it's, it's hard to, to determine if, if they are concrete, if they're paver patios, um, or if they would, if they're paver patios, they don't fall under our structure definition, but if they're concrete, they would. Um, so it's, it's hard to determine if any of them are, other ones in the area are in the setbacks as well. in terms of this much variance or anything like this in, in North Um, I mean, in the past, we've had some that were 50% um, for accessory structures um, that we that have been approved in, in years past, but everyone's a different case and looked at differently, so they all have different, different standards and different uh, hardships that are on them that they look at. Uh, I'd kind of like to suggest that we take this into private discussion. Can we do that? Is there any, any comment? Any comment from any interested in that would be the next step? That's true. Right. Yeah, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Sir? <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, my name is Joseph Dunning. I live at 1404 Sunflower Street. Um, yes, I've been sworn in. Thank you. Um, first off, I'd, I'd like to start in this and that there is no winner in this situation. I don't like being up here. It's, it's not something I wanted to do. I have nothing but respect and admiration for my neighbor. He's been a great neighbor for the six years that he's been there. We've had no issues whatsoever. I come here as a, as a homeowner, as a father, and just looking out for the best interests of my family based solely on the circumstances that we're at. Um, if I can make all this go away, I absolutely would. But unfortunately, I have to look out just for what's in the best interest of us because this is not the type of thing where me as the homeowner at that northern lot 
right immediately behind this facility um, that can just say it's it's unfortunate. I'll, I'll appease because I, I want to be an appeasing person. That's what my family and I are. But this has implications. Um, from the very beginning of the project, when, when the construction started, our initial thought was that it was a patio. Because to this point, and, and as you're all familiar with subdivisions like ours, there's a consistency. The, and, and that's one of the things that for my wife and I, when we purchased our house, is that we like the idea of the open space, the, the yards for our kids, the, the no fences. The, I know some neighbors put up the abravines and, and the different plants to kind of shelter themselves from neighbors, but we didn't do that. You know, we like the openness. Um, so with a patio going in, we're like, okay, we'll see how that goes out. Then we saw the foundation being poured and, and the way it was built. And then the extension out past the foundation. My wife and I had great reservations as we watched this structure being built. But we, from, from day one, we're basing our assumptions that everything had been approved. That the, that the licensing, the, the zoning restrictions, all that, that must be the... The, the restrictions that they have for their property, I, I have not seen the, the diagrams prior. So we didn't say anything, but the whole time we were trying to think of what solutions could we possibly have because, and, and as the pictures show, but they don't show, is it's an imposing, imposing structure to our property. Not only is the, is the you know, the, the whatever percentage that it is over that line, which, and from what I've seen from the, the diagrams, the initial a, a, a easements, and I apologize for my terminology if I'm off on anywhere, but allow for maybe an additional three feet, but then to go like 16, that's a, that's a lot. And that, and that really puts us at a disadvantage as the homeowner, the immediately impacted homeowner. And we have a great neighborhood. I love my neighborhood. I, I don't have any immediate plans to leave, but when that day comes, we are going to be impacted by the structure that's there. Privacy or not, it is an impeding factor because it takes away that openness that, that my yard had prior to it. Um, I mean, and, and again, my wife and I, we looked at different things and we talked about what could we plant, what can't we plant. For our property, we have easement restrictions because the utilities are on our side. So we're limited on what we can plant or do in, into that area at the bottom of that property, but also into the, the ponding aspect. And I don't know how all that plays in, but, but we knew when we had, for instance, there was trees that we planted, they are, that's pretty much the farthest that we're allowed to go south to that line. And, and for us to do anything additional, we decided that's it's at that point cutting off our yard for our kids, our dogs, and so on. Um, so, you know, so, so as us, as, as the homeowners there, our, our conundrum is what do we do? Because as we found out that, you know, no permits were, were obtained in, in, in the normal process, that the homeowners association hadn't approved it, it's, it's a, and, and from talking to some of the other neighbors, and I know not all of them had submitted comments, and, and they're not here today, of course, but it, it breaks that line. As you look down, it's all different. And, and, and yeah, as you, as you get farther away, it's less impacting, but that's, we're the house that it comes right up to. And, and that's the problem that I have. Um, and, and, and I do say, and, and I will it, it comment, the, the suggested alterations, it does help. But it's still, there's other factors that we can't just look beyond. I was hoping to not even speak today because I had already submitted my letter and I, I kind of summarized a lot of different things. But, but as I see that, it's, it still has impactful issues for my family because when that day comes when we do decide to sell and we're being compared to all our neighbors and then we're the house that has the line right up, you know, with the structure right up to our property line. I also have reservations similar to my neighbor down the street having watched the construction I'm not in construction. I'm a fairly handy man. I built the deck that's back there. I've, I went through all the permit processes and, and, and understand how all of that works. I watched the contractors at 11 p.m. plus kind of doing stuff in a really unique, let's so call it unique just because I don't know. But I, I have great question with how it was built and we had great concern as the aesthetics were completed the, you know, of, of how the structure is truly going to be when it's done. And I know it's not done yet. I know there's some things and, and, and we hope that they get resolved in some capacity. But um, it's just, it's, it's not something I, I can get behind. And I really want to. I, I, and, we, and we really even debated about even coming tonight and speaking. But it's, it's not a spot where I can sit and, and again, give that approval of, of my support for it. And after hearing my neighbor's attorney, you know, and hearing the story of how that's gone through, I think there's a lot of it. And I hopefully, as that progresses, there are legal steps that they can take 
with this contractor. I think there's a lot of things that are in writing. And, and again, I'm, I'm not in law either, so I'm, I'm, I can't even comment to that. But I don't have any steps. I'm not going to, you know, there's no actions I can take. There's nothing I can do it, that, that's going to change the perceived value or the perceived openness of my yard. And, and, and that's the part where I'm at a disadvantage. Now, as I look at things, and, and as a homeowner having gone through this, I've hired my share of contractors, good and bad. But I also know for me, and, and, and I can't speak specifically to what goes through someone else's mind, but when I get that call in April, hey, we don't have this, or we don't have that, and my contractor keeps telling me, yes, at some point, at, at, at what point does that responsibility fall of, to take that extra step to check to where all of this could have been avoided at an earlier spot? And, and, that, and that's the reservation that I have through looking at the whole process because it's, it's unfortunate. I, I mean, that's horrible that someone did this. After hearing the stories of it, after talking to my neighbor's attorney, um, man, I hope someone you know legally takes care of him because um, that's just not what we want in our neighborhood or in Orange Township. But but it, but again, I mean, it's the value and, and the uniqueness that makes Orange, Orange Township a, a great area for the subdivisions like the estates of One Oak is the consistency, and and when you break that consistency to the degree that it is broken with the way the structure's built, we can't recoup that in any way. I, and, and I don't know what that financial number is gonna look like when we go to sell, but as a home buyer, if I was looking at our house, it would be a factor. It would be a decision. Like I don't have the openness of the yard like, like my neighbors do, like what I want. Um, and I wish I knew what a good answer was. Because I, I, I know where our property line, I know in the one picture, I think it was image seven where the red line was drawn. The line's about maybe four or five feet up from there, closer, but I mean, that's where our property goes. And it's, but again, when you look at the structure and the distance, but you also have to take the vertical aspect to it because their whole house is a higher level than ours is. Extend that property out, it's just, it's, a, it's an entowering type of structure. And, and, and again, I, I really don't like being up here to say, you know, it's, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm so sorry. Um, I hope, however, this comes and whatever is decided is decided. But if I don't say my piece, I'm not, I'm not doing the best of my family. Um, so thank and you. And I would yeah. like to add that, you know, his remedy of adding his arborvitaes is probably going to bump that look out another four feet. It, it, it would. Yeah. And that, that was our thought, too. Um, the other side, too, is just the, in the context that was brought up about the size that they would need to be. It's going to even require them to be farther from the house just for the rooting, but and then so even gets farther into that ponding area. And I don't. And another thing, I don't want a backed up backyard with water. We we sometimes get it if, if grass isn't clear from that drain because the drain is in our our, our mutual corners where that drain is, and so there is value to that ponding area. And that's why I'm, I'm looking and I'm trying to think of how okay does this work? Is this a solution that I can really get behind? And and it is better. But, but it's, it's not something I can just give the stamp of saying we support it. I, just, I can't do that. I want to, but I just can't. I'm sorry. Mr. Dunning, I visited, uh, just looked from the street today to see what we were dealing with. Did, do you happen to have any photographs of what it looks like from your house so we can get the perspective that you see? I don't. One of the photos was taken from the street, something that was shown today. I just wonder how different, because you said it is higher elevation in your house, how different that looks from your view than it looks from the view that I looked at from the street on Scarlet. Yeah, unfortunately I don't. Um, I know that our yard is a, from the property aspect, our yard is larger in our backyard than, than, than my neighbor's yard. And they also have a much steeper decline, as you can probably see in some of the photos. So it's, and, and that was when it was first being built. The, the concern we had is we were out with our family and watching it. Yeah, because even there, it's, it's still, it's kind of like the, the uptick there is, is what we run into. I was trying to get perspective. The house already sits higher. Yes. Sat higher than your house before the, the build up, right? His house sits higher than your Correct, house. yes. Okay. I, I, I don't know how much. I mean, it's not a ton, but as you. I mean, there's a lot of windows there, so yeah. there was already a privacy. Well, I mean, to, the, to a degree, yes, but now it, it puts that regular sitting space that much closer. And that's the part. And it's not necessarily just privacy into our house, 
but as we, because we had ambitions to continue like almost like a phase two under our property of like having the additional patio underneath the deck because the deck, that's the farthest that my easement allowed me to build. And so as we were planning that, it was like my son's graduating from high school, like middle son in three years, or he's a sophomore now, however the math works out. Um, we were hoping to have that done prior, but we have now have to reconsider whether or not we even want to do that. And, that, and it's, it's decisions like that, which we hate. We hate the fact that we're put in that position. And, and while the whole circumstance is horrible for my neighbor, and I'll, I'll say that without, and I'll say it over and over again because it's worth saying, that there's repercussions that could be taken legally with the contractor that, that in, in our opinion, is the better route to go because, because again, what options do we have as the, as the most impacted neighbor? Our other neighbors, they're, and they've shown their support, but they don't have the encroachment right up to their property line. We're the ones that have to deal with that. So why I appreciate their support for our neighbor, and, and in all other circumstances, I would support him in anywhere I could, but I, I can't on this one. Thank you. Has the HOA and the zoning department approved other build-outs like this that are within the variance? I mean, are there other houses that have added on to their, at the back like this? Um, if, the, if they have, they've met the setback requirements. Is there anybody else that wanted to speak? I know there was another one that make there. She with you? I just wanted to make sure. Did you want to speak? Yes, sir. Come up, state your name, address, and that you've been sworn in. My name is Balakrishna Jalapali. I am from Dublin 4831 Western Regional, Dublin, Ohio. I have known Priest Ramakrishna for so long. And he's a very respectful man. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry to I'm so sorry to interrupt, sir. Can you please affirm if you've been sworn in? Yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. I apologize. Thank you. So I have known uh, Mr. Priest uh, Ramakrishna Garu for a long time, and he's a very respectable man. And the situation has already been explained by many people. So it's unfortunate. It's a contractor that made a mistake that put him into this position. So there had to be a way to punish the contractor rather than punishing him by not only losing their money, the $42,000, but it's going to be the mental stress that he has to go through. I understand we all have our jobs to do. I work for State of Ohio. We have to do, but please take this into special consideration and do whatever you can. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is uh, Mohan Reddy Gosala, 6028 uh, Trent Court, Lewis Center, Ohio, I swear in. So, uh, without discounting, uh, discounting any words what Mr. Dunning said, he has a valid concerns to be as a backside neighbor. But like what Mr. Uh, Dunsmore showed in the picture, by there is a 35 feet easement between the property lines. Still, there is a, even after there is an encroachment, still there is a 22 feet gap with the arbor vitis, the American pillar trees that grows like a 30 feet tall. It gives much bigger uh, privacy protection what, than what currently they have. That just that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Keseva Marukoti. I live in 3989 Heaven Rock Lane, Powell, Ohio. I just want to uh, be here today. Uh, uh, as uh, everybody said that Ms. Ram Krishna, the very respected priest in, in our community, he actually started this program after he saw my house where I did the similar extension. And then the, the, the HYA suggested as that to put the bushes, uh, the tall one, same like that, uh, to create the privacy. Uh, if needed, we can show the pictures uh, in the later part. I just want to uh, emphasize that part. And, uh, thank you for giving the opportunity. Thank you. Are you in, are you in Glen Oak as well? No, I am in uh, uh, Powell, Ohio. Oh. Good evening. Uh, my name is Saket Narayanam. I live in 1387 Scarlet Avenue. Um, I swear in. And uh, I'm the son of Priest Ramakrishna. So 
Just a few uh, things about this project. Um, it is definitely something that's unfortunate uh, that has occurred. Um, we would have never done something like this intentionally. Um, and we also would like to address the uh, concern of the Dunnings and we would we want to procure some sort of middle ground to where we could um, you know, negotiate with them on what we could do and how we could compensate for this. Um, again, um, I understand that there is a point on resale value, but there are others um, in the community that have had these extensions made um, and even in our line, um, though they do meet that 35 uh, feet setback, you know, their value still increases. So in that sense, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's a fair point, but um, we still want to address all the concerns and we do want to make any sort of changes that we can. Um, and we would like to discuss that, but we hope that you grant the variance for us. But thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm swearing in as I'm ready. Kogori, 8039 Cold Harbor Boulevard, Lewis Center. I belong to um, Orange Township. So, yeah, hearing uh, concerns of both sides, I've been uh, known to Ram Krishna Garu for a while. And, um, you know, as, uh, it's not like, you know, their mistake or anything. You know, they have been like, you know, very good person. Uh, as a family, I have known them like, you know, all the whole family is really, really nice. And, um, but I really can um, understand the concerns of both sides because, you know, Ram Krishna Garu, uh, family, they have been, you know, dreaming of that uh, room because they didn't know because they got all the approvals. You know, they spent like forty-two thousand dollars on that, and they have been like, you know, dreaming to uh, live in that, experience that you know, room. But suddenly, it's like, you know, uh, it's not approved. You know, they're like, you know, got all this by short, and now uh, they have concerns. They're hearing concerns, you know, from the neighbor be be behind their house. So I understand their concern is like. First thing is privacy, which is being like addressed by, you know, they're ready to address that privacy concerns. But now another concern is the openness. But as we hear, there is a 35 feet uh, line, uh, um, a gap between their house and the property line, but they're encroaching like into um, 15 feet, leaving like 21 feet. And also the height of the room behind what they're building is not any, uh, is actually a lot shorter than the actual house itself so which may not be a big concern but it is still a concern to mr dunnings which is understandable at the same time you know uh, understanding from pre, uh, ram krishna Garu's side they already like you know got into like so many things taking all this mental strain physical strain all the you know disadvantages of this construction being done so you know in my opinion if you can please consider that uh, especially when they are ready to negotiate with the neighbor and you know do whatever they possibly can do uh, they are even trying to change their plan of you know taking down the window put a transom window so that they cannot see anything and moving everything so they are they are they are already doing like so much and also they are all in addition to that they are like planning to grow these trees which will completely block the view for them which is already a disadvantage uh, for Ram Krishna's family but still they are ready to do. Uh, anything possible in their hands to address the concerns of their neighbor. So if you can please consider um, this approval, uh, we'll be really glad. Thank you. Yeah. So with no further comment, um, the board We'll move it, make a motion to move into private deliberations okay. um, to discuss the merits of the application and the evidence. Uh, okay. discussed. I'll make a motion to move into private deliberations on this case. Second. Uh, motion made by Mr. Oster to move pr to into private deliberations, second by Mr. Trev. Those voted, Mr. Trev's? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes.
I know what she said. I want to board, there's been some discussion. If you want to make a motion to uh, come out of private deliberations, um, that would be great. I have moved to come out of private deliberations. I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Trebs uh, to return from private deliberations. Uh, second by Mr. Oster. This video, Mr. Trebs. Yes. Ms. Neff. Yes. Ms. Ross. Yes. Mr. Shipley. Yes. Mr. Oster. Yes. And at this time, can we please move um, the townships exhibits and the applicant's presentation into the record, please? So moved. Second. Motion made by Mr. Trevs uh, to accept the township exhibits and the applicant's presentation in the record. Uh, second by Ms. Ross is voting. Mr. Trevs? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes. The, uh, as you can see, we, we talked at length, um, much discussion. Um, and um, with those discussions uh, that we had, and, uh, and while we appreciate concessions um, to the neighbor behind the movement of windows, our vitis, this, that, and the other, that's really out of the scope of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, with that said, and the, um, the considerations that we have, um, whether it's the character of the neighborhood, um, whether it adversely affect property values, any of that, we went through every one of those. Um, and also discussed the contractor fraud piece, um, which I, I think comes into play, we thought come into play, and is something that we, we took very seriously. And with that said, um, and based on the factors that I discussed there, I would make a motion to approve case number VA-2210, the property located at 1387 Scarlet Avenue, Lewis Center, Ohio, seeking an area variance from rezoning case 12451 in the estates of Glen Oak to allow for the constructed structure to en encroach 13 feet and 9 inches into the 35-foot rear yard setback. Second. Uh, we have a motion made by Mr. Shipley to approve variance case VA-22-10. Submitted, uh, seconded by Ms. Neff. Those voting, Mr. Trevs? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Always get your paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> or you learned. pay any money. <laughs> Lessons sure, learned, right? Sure. Lessons learned. Always go to your HOA. Sure. Yes. I mean. the then you. come here. Mm -hmm. I mean. Then go to Delaware. Thank you. Thank you. Learn those processes. Yes. If you I plan mean. on doing anything I mean. on your properties. Because everybody has an HOA. Almost. Sure. 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 You're welcome to stay, but with some minutes and other things that yeah. you don't have to stay for. So, do we have minutes? We do. Yeah. Good luck with your addition, sir. He emailed us. I said, I'm going to back off you guys. I'm like, kind of want to do it. I'm going to get it to Joseph. We have a question up to you. Thank you. You're welcome.
Uh, the next order of business is the action on the July 21st BZA minutes. I did. I, I did receive changes from Miss Ross and Mr. Shipley. I didn't uh, reply to all. I should have probably, but I didn't. I sent them to you. That's all I had to. Sure, what you I left us out on the chain. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I replied to all, but I didn't. <laughs> First, Miss Ross, then you. Okay. Let's go. Well, hearing no further changes, I move to approve the minutes from July 21st, 2022, as, as corrected. Okay. I'll second that. Motion made by Ms. Ross to approve. July 21st, 2022, BZA minutes as amended, seconded by Mr. Shipley. Those voting, Mr. Trebs? Yes. Ms. Neff? Yes. Ms. Ross? Yes. Mr. Shipley? Yes. Mr. Oster? Yes. Is that it, or do we have another one? That, that's it. it. That was it. It's me.